deep in the heart of France, in the ile de france region of Paris, engineers were about to undertake one of the most ambitious construction projects of the 21st century. The Grand Paris Express wasn't just going to be big in terms of size and budget, but it was going to utilize an earth-eating machine to drill below groundwater level and create structures that would support what was going to be Europe's largest infrastructure project. Operating the vertical shaft machine for large-scale projects like this doesn't only require a high skill set, but the ability to act fast when something goes wrong. If the machine veers off course, it can destabilize the surrounding soil and cause cave-ins. Workers could also end up getting trapped in very tight spaces if loose rocks or any part of the structure just so happens to collapse during inspection. So what exactly does it take to operate this next level shaft boring machine? The funny thing about vertical shaft machines is that various iterations of it have existed at different points in history. In the past, miners used simple tools like windlasses, hand cracks, pickaxes, and shovels to dig deep vertical shafts into the earth, looking for ore and other essential minerals underneath. So, from medieval miners to modern engineers, vertical shaft machines have literally been at the core of progress. Vertical shaft machines have about three main parts, which are the shaft boring unit, the lowering unit, and the spoil removal system, along with a couple supply units. Demand for these machines have surged lately, along with the ever-growing need for more underground infrastructure. So, the vertical shaft sinking machine, or VSM for short, is now designed to be modular, granting it greater flexibility no matter the operation. More popular VSMs, like the Heron Connect vertical shaft sinking machine, can dig shafts between 4.5 and, and 18 meters wide, that's up to 60 feet across, and can go down as deep as 250 meters, or about 820 feet. And just for context, this means that a 50-story building can easily be put in the hole that it digs. So here's how the machine works. Think of the VSM as a type of tunnel boring machine, but instead of digging sideways like the ones that make subway tunnels, this one goes straight down. They're used for all sorts of projects, such as mine shafts, ventilation systems, or even access points for underground construction. When the VSM was put to work in the Grand Paris Express, it was used to provide four shafts for ventilation and emergency access for Line 17 of the Express. VSMs are like the elevators of the tunneling world, but instead of carrying people, they're carving out the path. At the front of the machine, you have a large cutter head breaking down rock and soil with their 35 twin disc cutters and has a speed of two to three and a half revolutions. The discs themselves are about 19 inches and each weigh about a ton, which allows it to still work effectively even against challenging ground conditions. Right after the cutter wheel is the gripper system that creates additional thrust force for the cutter head and also helps with steering the cutter head in the right direction. Right in the middle of the VSM is the control cabin, where a special device called the SBC operator controls all functions including the evacuation of rock and dirt. There are also other units for power and ventilation so that the machine can keep working for long periods of time. But before the VSM can even be put to work, the engineers have to arrive at the site to figure out what type of soil they are dealing with, whether soft soil, hard rock, or a mix of the two. They take a bit of the soil to test it. This helps in customizing the VSM to handle the task ahead. Then there's also the question of where the project is going to take place. If it's in an inner city area with limited construction footprint, then there is a high chance that the VSM is going to be used as this is a tight area where there is very little room for mistakes. If the site is not prepared properly and climate control and dust management isn't taken into consideration, then there are just safety hazards waiting to happen. Once that is all sorted out, then that's when the fun begins. The initial section for construction is excavated and a concrete ring beam is installed for support to absorb the forces from the shaft sinking process. Then the first segments of the shaft are assembled. Before the VSM is lowered into the shaft, 
dummy frames are used to position the brackets for the machine arms, and the brackets are welded to the steel plates already cast into the concrete segments. The VSM is assembled on sites that it can be customized to suit the shaft's diameter. Then it is lifted into the shaft by a mobile crane and mounted onto the brackets. Once the VSM is in the shaft, then the rest of the equipment can be installed. Operators typically use three winches to lower the machine further into the earth and also use it to lift the machine out when it's time for maintenance or the project is complete. Supply lines are put in place to ensure all necessary power and communication is available. Unlike the TBM where operators control the machine from the inside, engineers take full control of the VSM from the operator's cabin on the surface located near the site. The operator is surrounded by multiple screens showing stored data as well as the position of the cutter head. From the cabin, the operator has complete control of the entire process and can set up the cutter head to work with the required speed. But there is still one extra step that workers have to do themselves before the VSM is put to work. At the very start of the cutting work, the shaft is flooded with water. This eliminates the need for groundwater lowering. In addition, it acts as a water circuit for removing the excavated rock and dirt. The water will later be pumped out when the shaft is ready for use. Then it's go time. The cutting head moves radially from the center to the outside areas, breaking up the ground while the muck removal system clears the debris. Some machines use a slurry system, mixing the muck with water and pumping it up to the surface like a muddy milkshake. Others use pneumatic suction, Think of it as a massive vacuum cleaner sucking up the debris. Either way, it keeps the shaft clear so the machine can keep going. Once the machine gets to work, the operator watches the monitors attentively to adjust the machine if it faces any unexpected conditions. Operating the VSM requires more than just engineering know-how because you need a bit of knowledge on different geological conditions. There is only so much that can be predicted beforehand, and if the operator encounters certain issues like high water table or fracture zones, it's essential that they know how to navigate these obstacles so that the structural integrity of the shaft is maintained. Shifts can also stretch long, and you have to deal with noise, vibrations, and being in a high pressure environment throughout the construction process. As the VSM sinks lower, Precast concrete segments with rubber sealing gaskets are installed at the top of the shaft and continue to be bolted into place as the machine moves further down. An automatic bentonite lubrication system reduces friction between the shaft and the surrounding ground to aid the shaft sinking process. Once the VSM reaches the desired depth, it is lifted out of the shaft. Then, the shaft is sealed with underwater concrete, and the annular space, which is the space between the shaft's outer wall and the concrete segments, is filled with grout. The grout is pumped in through the existing bentonite system, and once it is strong enough, the water is pumped out. Only then is the shaft completely ready for use. Up until this point in time, VSM technology has been used to construct shafts for just about everything, from ventilation and emergency shafts, to storage spaces for foods and liquids. There are currently even plans to tweak the technology to handle future large-scale underground parking systems and much more since the technology behind the machine is constantly being developed to make it more economical and smarter. So have you ever seen a vertical shaft machine at work? Share your thoughts in the comments section below and don't forget to like and subscribe.